Hello and welcome to Nitro Talk. Today we're going to be looking at a very interesting uh, older uh, OPS 3.5 cc uh, .21 buggy engine right here. You know, I thought that I had done a video on this at some point, uh, but I don't think I can't find uh, one. I don't think I have done any video whatsoever on this. I certainly have done a video on my OPS Speedster Power engine, uh, which is a super cool one that I really like. Uh, but this is an older engine here. Very interesting. Some super cool stuff uh, we're going to take a look at and talk about. Uh, if you're into nitro engines, vehicles, anything at all to do with the nitro side of the RC hobby, I would uh, really appreciate your support. Thank you very, very much. Uh, so uh, there's also a lot of paperwork uh, that came in the box here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a peek at this box. So uh, this is an OPS 3.5 buggy engine, right? And it's article uh, number 8841. Uh, it'd be like uh, your model number. Uh, box is pretty good condition for its age. Uh, in this engine, I believe there's a couple... Pretty much everything in here is marked right around 1991. This is uh, an air filter diagram. It's pretty cool. Looks kind of like a salt shaker up there. Um, yeah, screw part number 3574. Uh, yeah, so this is, I believe this engine came out right around 1991 here. Uh, there's a lot of documentation with it. All right, so uh, I am uh, disassembling this thing. I saw that it had a paper gasket on the back, uh, which, huh, it has a paper gasket and an O-ring. That's kind of odd. Uh Usually it's one or the other. Uh, this is a non-interference back plate. Uh, this is an engine with a bolt-on exhaust adapter, uh, and we will discuss that as well. Let me go ahead and... I wonder if these are two and a half millimeter. Uh, let me see. 332nd. Yeah, 332nd is uh, what's going to be proper for these head bolts here. You know, I'm not even sure if I've ever had this engine all the way apart. Um, I don't really remember ever checking out the insides of this engine. Uh, like I said, it's... Uh, it's an older engine. Very interesting carb on it as well, um, which we will discuss here shortly. Uh, it is a standard plug engine. It is not a turbo engine. Um, there were, uh, apparently there, there were a whole line. Uh, like I said, this is number 8841. Uh, there were multiple engines in this line. And uh, the higher end ones did have uh, turbo plugs and I believe they had larger crankshafts. Um, I believe this one's a 12 millimeter. Now this is a separate head button, isn't it? Yep. Head button. There's our cooling head. Very nice. Not uh, No shine cuts. It's one kind of uniform billet piece. All right, go ahead and see if, oh, sleeve comes right on out. Uh, having a little bit of a time getting, oh, there we go. Just having a little bit of a hassle getting the conrod off of the crank aluminum collet you know i was getting ready to do a uh video on collets um the they're most commonly brass right uh but there are steel ones and there are also aluminum ones like that one right there 
All right. Um, let me go ahead and well, it's a is it the same size? Yeah, same three thirty second at the pinch bolt as it is at the head button. Release that carburetor. Pull it out of there. Got a insulator on that. All right, so that's pretty much uh, taken apart. So let's go ahead and look at that crankcase first, and we'll see uh, that we have uh, an exhaust adapter. Uh, the, I mean, it's I guess that would be a manifold, uh, seeing as how it's connected uh, to it. It would just be the outlet. So it uh, looks like you're missing two screws or something's going on here. Is that the correct uh, piece? So let's go ahead and go to the paperwork here. And so this is one of the pieces of paper that come with it. And you can kind of see that is the gasket, which looks like the picture there. All right, since 1st of June, 1991, all the engines, 3.5 SP, SP meaning rear exhaust, have four screws to fix the new exhaust adapter. This new adapter has the reference number OP3117 and as usual is not included in the engine box. So uh, requires an exhaust adapter, does not come with an exhaust adapter. We sell also a packaging reference number 3119 which enclosed the adapter, the four screws, and the gasket. Now here's the important line, the last one. All the present two screws adapters fit also the new four screws crankcase. So what we have right here is an original correct two screw adapter on a newer four screw crank crankcase. So, uh, this is uh, a correct adapter. It is a first version uh, or two screw adapter. Come on out of there. Uh, I did track this thing down. Now, this was many years ago. Uh, I had this engine. This is probably eight or so years ago. I uh, had it a very long time ago. And I knew, basically, I had gotten it like this, okay? I had gotten it uh, in the box, everything. No adapter, right? I did not have an adapter or gasket. And, and I basically looked at this and like, well, I'll never be able to use it like that, right? Uh, it'll, it's basically going to be worthless with no adapter. So... Uh, and as you can imagine, this uh, early 90s OPS uh, Italian engine, there's not a whole lot of spare parts out there. But I was able to track down this, which is an original OPS first version, two screw uh, ex exhaust adapter. Uh, and these are uh, the correct um, OPS gaskets for said adapters so um adapt gasket goes right on there like such and then you mount your uh, adapter right onto it so this engine uh, can certainly be ran uh, in buggy as it was originally uh, designed to uh, with this adapter. Now, what I would I like to have the uh, you know two point adapter with the four screws attachment, sure. But uh, I'm I'm very lucky to have you know many years ago at least secured 
uh, an adapter, right? So I have an adapter that, oh, come on. I have an adapter that yeah, can be used with the engine. Like I said, it is the correct adapter. It's just the, the, the two-screw version. All right, I'm going to... Sorry, I had to put this back together. I don't know why I took it apart. And... Root. All right. So that's the exhaust adapter situation. If you look you know, through there, it's, uh, it should function perfectly fine. Uh, a white plastic um, insulator for the carb. That's unique. A German front bearing, uh, metal sealed and bearing in the rear um nice uh i guess you could almost call those yeah those are shine cuts up there on the top half of the crankcase uh that back plate again with a an o-ring and a paper gasket very unique uh and that little nub on the outside all right uh, let's go ahead and look at that head button oh that that glow plug needs Todd turboed it is not uh, sitting very well as you can see it's kind of low let me get you zoomed in there you see how it's you can kind of see uh, it needs to come up into the chamber which basically how you accomplish that is by putting a thinner uh, washer on it right put a little bit thinner washer that'll let the glow plug come down uh, or from this direction up into the combustion chamber a little more making that smoother uh, making that more uh, like a turbo the Todd turbo uh, it's a nice hunk of aluminum there, that uh, head button, separate head button, two-piece cooling head on the old uh, OPS here. Uh, let, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that carburetor. And uh, super cool carburetor uh, that comes with this. So this right here comes in the box, this uh, rod with a ball on the end. Uh, and this is how these old uh, carburetors were set up. So I'm unscrewing this piece on the end, right? Then I'm going to take uh, right, that ball rod thing and I'm going to Tighten that up. Not tight, tight. All right, so you see how uh, that ball is now installed inside there. You got a little bit of wiggle, and you can pull the carburetor with that. So basically how this style worked was you, you set up this end of the rod, just like your, your modern rod with a couple of collars, a uh, spring, and then your servo arm will sit uh, in between the two collars. Uh, and uh, servo arm moves your throttle just like that. It's a little bit, instead of having uh, a ball and a cup that attaches the cup to the ball, uh, the rod goes into the end of the carburetor there. It's pretty unique uh, setup, uh, and it was kind of how it was done in those days. It's not uh, something specific to this engine. Uh, it was a it was a pretty popular setup back in those days. All right, uh, this is a two needle carburetor uh, over there. Normally, where you would have your low end needle, right? Um, your ball goes in there, so you, you no needle on that side. Uh, this now this has an uh, you don't see these very often what I call an external uh, high speed needle. So the O ring would normally be on uh, the screw, 
Now, this you adjust by hand. There's no uh, slot on the end for a screwdriver. Uh, and, but the O-ring is on this piece. So the needle, needle goes down into there. Right? But the O-ring gets this inside surface up in there. Needle. Come on now. Needle in. And O-ring gets its seal right there. Pretty unique. Uh, this, again, is built like the Speedster Power Carve, where it's got, if I can get a look down in there, see how the barrel is hollow. You know what? Let me go ahead. We're... we're, we're we got time, all right? We're checking this thing out. Let's pull this apart and see how it looks from the inside. Pull this boot off of here. Yeah, see how the slide is hollow. Um, is this piece unscrew I believe it does um, and that is not big enough uh, let me go ahead and pull out this would be the low speed needle kind of looks looks like a mid speed needle but uh, this is the low adjustment on this carburetor Take a look at this. Now this this is going to be just a uh, an adjustable seat because our our oh whoa something dropped. <laughs> let me you know what before it gets lost lost. Let me find it. Oh yeah, little spring right there. Don't want to lose that. So, all right, let me take that low speed needle out, which is an adjustable needle seat. Uh, and okay, let me take that off. Do I want to? You know what, this, uh, this is the original boot. I don't want to go wrestling it off of here, so we'll, we'll get a look on it. Uh, well, look at that. So that's basically the low-speed needle. Uh, no screw. It doesn't screw in or out, right? There's no threads on it. It's just kind of a unique... That's the low-speed needle there. Uh, and let me see if I can figure out how it went back together. Um, where, okay, so, uh, that low speed needle will go in there first. And then the spring. And then I guess that piece Keeps it all in there. And then if you put the rod in. That will then act upon the spring. Yeah, so now it's, it's solid. But this can still move but yeah this now has spring tension on it this low speed uh, needle there like I said pretty unique setup um, and you know the old OS carburetors are set up very similar to this with an adjustable needle seat in a spring loaded um, a spring loaded low speed needle Alright, um, do we take apart, we, do we need to take apart the, uh, that's just the banjo fitting, 
over on that side. Uh, again, external O-ring. Uh, very nice, uh, no name on it, but very nice work. Uh, no removable Venturi. Very cool. All right. Um, oh, and there's no... That's another unique thing. Normally, on a slide, it'll have a line in it. And that line uh, will match up. One will be going straight down the carb. And then you'll have the the gully gully the channel with which uh the uh, idle screw sits in this thing does not seem to have let me put this back that goes right there yeah this uh slide has no grooves in it at all so it basically There's nothing to stop it from go pulling outward, uh, but the 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 stop here, the idle stop, will prevent it from closing all the way. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all the way back together. Throw the high speed needle on there super cool unique uh carburetor it's a uh, old school carburetor uh, with the rod all right oh sorry i gotta throw everything back in here now uh yes this these o-rings on this are quite old they actually seem to be uh not dried out but i'm certainly going to uh molly coat them I'm just kind of uh, sitting this back together for the time being. All right, we looked at the head button. We looked at the carb. Aluminum collet, nice and shiny, brand new. It's pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and look at that crank. Now, this crank is plain. Uh, yeah, not a lot going on with this crank. Uh, pretty blocky from that side doesn't appear to be opened up at all it's just kind of got a hole there on the end uh no shark fin no leading edge uh no weight reduction do have the okay that's we, we have our cut behind the crank pin there and there's also a hole right there which I'm not sure if I've ever seen a hole back there on another engine. Uh, it's certainly not a common place uh, to have a hole drilled out right there, but there is one. Uh, our induction window, uh, again, our leading edge on it, uh, not very sharp, pretty much just has a flat surface right there. Normally that would be uh, cut down into a thinner wall uh, to uh, improve cutting through the air, right? Make it go faster. Uh, it just looks kind of like a, a standard, uh, non-modified, you know, kind of a jobber, everyday crank. Now, again, 1991, you got to, you know, remember that this is a very old engine. And, you know, the RG, uh, the, the OSRG crank looks pretty much identical to that. Uh, that's just kind of how they were done way back then. All right, so that's a crank. You know, we do have some bypass holes on the piston. That's kind of uh, cool. You got very big ones as well. Uh, some huge bypass holes on the piston here uh and you know this connecting rod is kind of a unique shape now it is not knife edged look at the edge of that that thing is big and round uh, so certainly not a knife edge uh, the bottom is kind of a unique shape it's kind of squared off a little corner cuts up there uh not super meaty down there but I mean, everything looks good. Nice oil hole right there. Um, yeah, I mean, the piston looks good. 
nice high quality aluminum, big bypass holes in it. Uh, but again, kind of, you know, unique looking, Look, looks a little different than most other, you know, it could be the age, could be the, the make. All right, down to the sleeve. You know what? The sleeve actually looks, uh, I was expecting this, the sleeve to be more plain than it is. Uh, so there's our exhaust and a unique exhaust. Got a, a, a bump at the top there. Uh, normally you will kind of see uh, exhaust do raise up towards the center. Uh, but that's kind of a unique uh, cutout right there. I've never seen it look exactly like that. Uh, come around to our intake, and our intake is huge. Looky there. Uh, that is a monster intake slash boost port right there. And it's even got a nice little ramp on it. Yeah. I was expecting this thing to be really plain, uh, but it's looking pretty good so far. Huge, huge intake slash boost port with a ramp on it. And then come over here to our uh, Schnurly situation on the side. And there's a couple of very nicely cut ports there. Uh, again, two of them. This would be a five port engine. Uh, I expected this to be a three port, but I uh, know it is a five port. Uh, twin Schnurlies on the side right there. And very nicely cut, uh, beautifully cut. Uh, these OPS engines uh, certainly were not uh, low end, right? These were these were your um, upon among your more expensive engines. Uh, so yeah, very very beautiful cuts on the five port old OPS here. We're getting good view of that. They're round, right? Both of them are kind of like oval pill shaped rounded ports, um, and. Not a lot of fangage, no fangage, no uh, ramp on the Schnurleys. Uh, just a nice little ramp on the intake there. But, all right, that is the sleeve. That's a pretty cool engine, you know. Uh, uh, is that a 12 millimeter crank or a 13 millimeter crank? Uh, I believe. So again, I said there's lots of paperwork with this thing. Uh, oh, looky there. The picture of the sleeve has that same uh, little rise up in the center of the exhaust port there. Uh, what was I talking about? Yeah, one of these papers here says that um, this engine has a 12 millimeter crank as opposed to the 13 millimeter in the higher end versions. So. I believe this is going to say, no, it's a 13, it's a 13 millimeter crank. So what did I see? Uh, is it this? So this is uh, kind of tells, uh, again, remember I said this is article 8841. So if you look. Article 8841 through 8846, right? Uh, you've got 3.5 buggy SPA, not the SPA Pro right above it, uh, but the regular SPA. 3.5 CC, ABC, uh, Bohr 16.6, Stroke, so it's a short stroke, larger bore than stroke. Uh, RPM, what do we six up? 28.5 RPM, is that what it's saying? Uh, and 10% nitro, it's saying uh, for those. But no, there's another, there's a paper somewhere. Oh, this is a cool one here, check this out. Uh, this is uh, color picture of the glow plugs there different various OPS glow plugs and that pretty cool speaking of glow plugs um, uh, is it this thing no so this is the parts again so these are the different motors article numbers there's mine the 8841 so you kind of go down and it 
tells you which spare parts you use on your engine. Oh, there it is. I knew I was missing one more page. All right, so this page here. Uh, Albero shaft. Is that crankshaft, right? I mean, I, I believe so. Uh, so 13 millimeter, 13 millimeter. The car and buggy, 12 millimeter. So maybe I got the Pro Corsa, maybe that, 3119, 3117. That's not the engine. It's 8841. It's kind of hard uh, to figure out exactly what all this stuff is, is saying. Uh, you got Italian on that side over here. It doesn't tell you which. Now, why did I think mine was not the Pro Corsa? Because, where is it at? Um, yeah, I mean, my numbers, 8841 does not fall in there. These are, this is the Racing Pro. Uh, it does have standard plug or a cone plug, turbo plug. Looks like an on-road exhaust there. Um, 0.4 and 0.5, is that what it's saying the shims are? Is that the total... Uh, there's looks like there's three shims on here. That is a point one. They're all aluminum. Let me see what my shim stack is on here. Point five is my shim stack. So yeah, point four to point five. Um, you know, again, I can't really. I know it's 8841, and 8841, it says 3.5 buggy SPA. SPA. But it said on the other thing that SPA, SP, SP equals rear exhaust. So all the engines, 3.5 SP. So what is the A, SPA? Uh, rear exhaust and A. All right, so anyways, I don't know exactly. I know which number it is. I don't know which of these it is. If, uh, but, but if, if. If mine has a 13 shaft, I don't believe it's a Pro Racing. See, this is supposed to have a, uh, the Pro Corsa here is supposed to have, this engine is supplied with cone plug head, right? The turbo head. So the only one without the turbo head is this one. But this one says it has a 12 millimeter. So there's where I'm confused. So my bad. All right. Plenty of paperwork. Uh, did we look at everything? We did look at everything. Uh, and yes, it is uh, a standard plug in here, standard head button. Um, yeah, we looked at everything. Uh, the cooling head, did we look at that? Uh, nice, kind of just like a piece of billet, aluminum, no shine cuts, it's totally round. Uh, cool, you know, nice, uh, some very nice aluminum parts here, um, very high quality. All right. Uh, what do you think of the old OPS? Uh, should I run this thing one of these days? Uh, this is certainly nowhere near uh, the top of the list of engines that I plan on running someday. But, uh, you know, I think it would run great. Uh, doesn't, you know, it, it, it would be interesting maybe to, uh, I mean, it is a 13 millimeter crank, so it's not, uh, super uncommon. I could probably find another 13 millimeter crank, like a uh, one from a uh, an SH that uh, is a little bit better set up. Uh, it might run really good with uh, a better crank in it, or a little bit of modification on this one. You know, do a little bit of modding on that. 
All right. Thank you very much for watching, checking out the old, the vintage uh, OPS 3.5, number 8841. See you on the next video. Have a great day.